So what is going on guys, Nando Pisani3 here with another video and iPadOS 14 is now officially out to the public. Came out a couple days ago and what should you do now? What should you play with first? So I'm going to talk to you guys about what you should get into immediately with iPadOS 14 and then if some of the things are even worth kind of fiddling with guys, but let's hop right into it. So if you guys have been following my channel, you know that I'm a big iPad Pro fanatic and Last year, Apple gave us iPadOS 13, and we thought it was a great step forward, and then 13.4 came out, and everybody was like, whoa. They threw in cursor support, they gave us the magic keyboard, and we were like, okay, this thing is turning into a laptop. This is exactly what I wanted. I wanted like a cool tablet form factor that could also be my lap in a traditional sense. So 13.4 comes out, and then everybody starts talking about iPadOS 14, giving us secondary monitor support, being able to move everything exactly where we want, and obviously we didn't get that, right? And that's a little bit disappointing and the iPadOS 14 update was a little bit um, of a downer in my opinion, but we still got a couple of cool things and it's basically five main features. And the first feature, which is something that a lot of people don't talk about is the compatibility of iPadOS 14, which also should be a little bit of a red flag when I'm looking into things. If all the iPads that were running iPadOS 13 can now also run iPadOS 14, then I should know that there isn't enough that there isn't a huge update in terms of power consumption. So there's, there isn't going to be anything crazy that's happening because iPadOS 14 works with all the iPads that were able to use iPadOS 13. So anything above iPad Air 2 and higher, I believe anything above iPad Mini 4 and higher, then there is any iPad Pro period, so dating back to the 2015 model, the, the first gen one. So a lot of people are going to be able to use iPadOS 14 without having to shell out a lot of money for a new device. So that's an amazing thing that Apple can do. But again, that means there wasn't a lot of power consumption changes, which to each their own, right? But let's get into the first visual feature. So the first visual feature has to be widgets. So widgets were announced originally in iPadOS 13. We got a little taste of it, which was nice. I was able to kind of customize it how I wanted to, and it gave the iPad a desktop feel, especially when I was able to move all the applications out of the home screen. And then iPadOS 14 basically just redesign them. They, they still do exactly what they did before. They give you information at a glance that you want. And for me, I always keep the weather widget up. I keep my battery so I know what all my devices are doing from a battery perspective. And then I leave my calendar up. So again, the widgets on iPadOS 14, they're nice. They're cool looking. Now that we can kind of change them in terms of sizes, uh, I like to have the news app and then the, the screen on time widget going for me at all times. And then if you go, if you guys scroll down on my widget today view, you see that the other third party widgets are still sitting in that iPadOS 13 kind of design language. And I'm waiting to see what third party app, what third party developers do. Um, and I'm curious to see how quickly that starts to kind of ramp out. Cause that's what I'm excited for because right now we're stuck to whatever Apple has given us. And that, that lack of customization is annoying to me. But again, I'm in Apple's ecosystem. So what else can I expect? And another thing that's kind of obnoxious is the fact that with iOS 14 on an iPhone, which I'm recording with, you're able to put those widgets anywhere on the screen versus here, you're stuck to this today view panel and I can't put them anywhere on the screen. Another, another bummer, but I guess it's Apple keeping their ecosystem as tight as possible and they don't want people having free range to do whatever they want. And then the one, I guess, flagship feature of iPadOS 14 that was specific for the iPad is the scribble mode. So scribble mode is actually a very cool technology. People have obviously wanted it for a really long time and it's cool that it finally came to the iPad because it makes sense on the iPad. It's basically anytime you see a text field, whether it is a URL bar on Safari, in your notes, in a form that you're filling out, pretty much anywhere there's a text field, you can now scribble in what you want to write and then it'll transform it into text, which is a beautiful thing. Uh, I haven't used it too often, I haven't found myself needing to, but a lot of people wanted a feature like that and it's really, really cool. And then also you got a lot of enhancements with Apple Pencil in terms of the Notes app, right? You're now able to handwrite a bunch of stuff and then the iPad knows and you can highlight it as if it is text and then move that, paste it into another document as actual text. So that is actually very cool. Again, I haven't gotten to the point where I used it because I type faster than I handwrite anyway, but it's still an amazing feature that people have been wanting for years. Not just on iOS and iPad, just a technology that people want access to easily for years. And again, they added a couple more things to the notes, like being able to do perfect shapes like triangles, circles, squares, rectangles, lines, uh, by, just, by just kind of drawing it yourself and then holding down and then the iPad knows what you're doing. So that I actually do use. I use that when I'm doing a lot of diagramming and things like that. But other than that, I do not really use Scribble. It's just a cool technology to have. And then another thing is that everything just got a little smarter in my opinion, right? Siri obviously got smarter in terms of what it can understand and what it can give back to you. But then 
just the UI got smarter in terms of Siri doesn't take up the entire screen anymore, right? When a phone call or FaceTime comes in, you don't, the whole screen doesn't go black and take up the entire 12.9 inch screen. You get a little, you get a little notification that drops down and you can decide to ignore it or answer it right then and there. So just little things like that that make the iPad a little bit easier to use and doesn't, isn't a detriment to your productivity. Again, whenever I would get a FaceTime call, everything would turn off. Whenever Siri would get turned on automatically or by itself, everything would go, would be unusable until Siri went away, which was pretty annoying. But that's pretty much iPad OS 14 in a nutshell. This wasn't an in-depth uh, review on every little thing, every little nuance, but these are the first things that you should try out immediately with your iPad. Again, if you have an older iPad, see if it's compatible with iPad OS 14. Like I said, iPad Air 2 and higher, iPad mini 4 and higher, any iPad Pro, and I think iPad 5th gen and higher of the, the entry level iPads. But don't quote me on that last entry level iPad, guys. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully it gives you guys a little bit of insight of what to do on iPad OS 14. And that's it. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time.